हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज द थर्टीन लेक्चर ऑफ यूनिट नंबर फाइव फॉर द सब्जेक्ट मैकेनिकल मेजरमेंट एंड मेट्रोलॉजी इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द टेम्परेचर मेजरमेंट वेर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द एक्सपांशन थर्मोमीटर्स नाउ व्हाट डू वी अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम द एक्सपांशन थर्मोमीटर वेन एवर वी चेंज द टेम्परेचर और वेन एवर वी हीट एनी सब्सटेंस द सब्सटेंस विल चेंज इट्स डायमेंशन नाउ इफ we measure those dimensions we can calibrate those change in the dimension in terms of the temperature so this category basically involves the expansion type thermometers which we are going to learn today and these thermometers are the bimetallic strips the liquid in glass thermometer and the pressure thermometers bimetallic strip will use the solid expansion principle that means the solid material will get expanded when the temperature will change the liquid in glass thermometer use the liquid expansion principle and the pressure thermometer uses the fluid expansion principle that means the liquid vapor and the gases so pressure thermometer uses this three way things so let us start with the very first one the bimetallic strips and as i told you the bimetallic strips uses the solid expansion principle that means it will use the solid material so in case of the bimetallic strip we are having the two metal strip now both strips are having the different thermal expansion coefficient now what do we understand from the thermal expansion coefficient whenever the temperature changes the material will get expanded okay so higher expansion coefficient will show the higher expansion of the material lower expansion coefficient show the low expansion of the material so if we are having two different materials which are having the different thermal expansion in that case whenever they are heated they will get expanded in a different dimension so there will be some variation in the length also okay now what we are going to do we are going to bind them together by means of welding or soldering okay and once we bind them what will happen if we heat them they cannot expand they have to expand together so what will happen the material that is having the higher expansion coefficient that will try to expand higher and due to that phenomenon or say tendency to expand higher what will happen the whole strip will get bent so the change in the temperature will be converted into the change in the radius of curvature of this metal strips okay secondly if we fix first end of this metal strip that means if we create a cantilever beam like situation in that case what will happen the free end of the metallic strip will go down or up so we can also measure this change in the direction or said change in the dimension of the free end to measure the temperature so the relationship between the temperature and the radius is given by this specific equation which says that radius of curvature is directly equal to 2 times thickness divided by 3 into the change in or said the difference between coefficient of expansion of both the materials multiplied by the initial temperature and the bonding temperature difference over here this alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the coefficient of expansion of that materials t is basically the operating temperature that is the temperature that we are going to measure t0 is the initial bonding temperature and the t that is available over here the small t is showing the thickness of both the strips and small r is showing the radius of the curvature now this kind of bimetallic strips are available in the various categories or we can say they are basically not used straight directly they are also used straight as well as they are also used in a helical shape and the spiral shape this is the straight bimetallic strip that we have seen right now the expansion will cause the change in the radius and this is the basic principle of the straight type bimetallic strip this is the practical version of the bimetallic strip which is straight type the second variety is the helical type now in this case the 
बाय मेटल और से बाय मेटल एक स्ट्रिप इज शेप्ड इन अलिकल वे एज यू कैन सी इट लुक्स लाइक अलिकल स्प्रिंग नाउ द फर्स्ट एंड ऑफ द स्प्रिंग इज अ फिक्स वन एंड द सेकेंड वन इज अटैच विथ द पॉइंटर नाउ इज अ नॉर्मल टेम्परेचर द इंडिकेटर विल बी समथिंग लाइक दिस बट वेन एवर इट विल गेट हीटेड वॉट विल हैपन द एक्सपांशन ऑफ दिस मेटालिक स्ट्रिप विल अकर एंड ड्यू टू द एक्सपांशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर मेटालिक स्ट्रिप इट विल ट्राई टू गेट ओपन अप एंड ड्यू टू दैट चेंज वॉट विल हैपन द कनेक्टेड पॉइंटर विल शो सम वैल्यूज इन दिस डायल नाउ दिस डायल इज कैलिब्रेटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेम्परेचर सो इट विल डायरेक्टली शो अस द टेम्परेचर दिस इज हाउ द बायोमेटॉलिक स्ट्रिप इन अलिकल शेप विल वर्क नाउ द लास्ट कैटेगरी इज द स्पायरल वन द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल इज ऑलमोस्ट सेम लाइक अलिकल वन बट ओवर हियर द शेप इज द स्पायरल वन एज यू कैन ऑब्जर्व दिस इज द स्पायरल टाइप वन एंड द फर्स्ट एंड ऑफ दिस स्पायरल स्ट्रिप इज फिक्स्ड वन एज यू कैन ऑब्जर्व ओवर हियर एंड द सेकेंड एंड ऑफ दिस स्पायरल स्ट्रिप इज कनेक्टेड विद द इंडिकेटर एंड वेन एवर द टेम्परेचर विल चेंज वॉट विल हैपन द एक्सपांशन ऑफ बायोमेटॉलिक स्ट्रिप विल चेंज the movement of this indicator and this indicator is ultimately calibrated such a way that it will show directly the temperature change this is how the spiral type bimetallic strip will work so this is all about the bimetallic strip now let us talk about the liquid in glass thermometers now these are the one of the most commonly used thermometers they are based on the liquid expansion whenever the temperature will rise the temperature will cause the volume change or say pressure change in the liquid okay and this principle is used in the liquid in glass thermometers so as you can observe in this figure a glass envelope is there this is a thick walled glass tube with a capillary bore in it inside this one is a very small sized bore which is available inside this glass envelope now below that there is a spherical or cylindrical bulb which is available below the small tube okay now in this specific bulb a temperature sensitive liquid is filled now the whole capillary is sealed once this temperature sensing liquid is filled in it now the size of the capillary depends on the varieties of the properties like the size of the sensing bulb the responsiveness of the liquid how responsive is the liquid is and the temperature range that we need to measure okay with this instrument so these are the three characteristic that affect the size of this capillary now secondly if we talk about the industrial thermometers in this case they also contain some protective cases to prevent any kind of damage to the thermometers now the upper section that is available with the capillary is known as the glass stem and the lower section is known as the thin glass bulb okay so this is all about the construction of the liquid in glass thermometers now whenever the there is a change in temperature it will cause fluid to expand in a direction now as you can observe the all three directions are locked there is only one direction left which is the capillary tube so there is only one direction open so what will happen the change in the temperature will cause mercury to expand and that expansion will cause the raise in the glass stem okay so mercury is basically one of the liquid that is used in the liquid in glass thermometer okay now since we are having a calibrated scale as you can observe there is a calibrated scale available wherever the liquid will end up we will be able to measure the temperature at that particular point so it will directly show us the temperature in this case now 
this kind of bulb as we discussed about that this kind of thermometers are basically filled with the mercury this is one of the most common material that is used in the liquid in glass thermometers because of its huge temperature range but it is also having one limitation because we cannot measure beyond 390 degree celsius because at 390 degree celsius the mercury will have its boiling point now what will happen after 390 degree celsius mercury may get evaporated and it will get condensed on the top of the stem this is possibility and if you want to use mercury in the liquid thermometer but still want to measure the temperature beyond 390 degree celsius there is an option available you can fill up the mercury with the nitrogen and the carbon dioxide at the higher pressure and then you will be able to get the temperature range up to 600 degree celsius so this is one of the possibility secondly there is one limitation also mercury is basically the volatile liquid okay it cannot be used everywhere if any kind of accident happens and mercury get leaked that can also cause the considerable damage to the products so that's why mercury is not also sometimes recommended so there are numbers of alternative fluids available based on the temperature that you want to measure this is the list of the alternative liquids that you can basically use in the liquid in glass thermometer very first one is the mercury itself because it is having a range very high the mercury is the most common one alternatively we are having the alcohol the second is the toluene next is the pentane and last one is the creosote so these are the alternative liquids available for the liquid in glass thermometers so this is all about the liquid in glass thermometers now let us talk about the pressure thermometers and as i talked about it the pressure thermometer uses the fluid expansion principle that means the fluid that means liquid can be there there can be vapor or that can be gas okay so this fluid will change the dimension whenever the temperature will change so very basic kind of pressure thermometers are also known as the liquid filled thermometers or we can say filled system thermometers now what is the basic principle as i told you the temperature change causes the expansion of the gases or the vapors okay so this is the basic principle now over here as you can observe there is a bulb available in which the fluid will be filled there is a capillary tube available over here and at the end we are having the burden tube which is connected with the temperature scale where we will be able to see the temperature so what will happen whenever the temperature will change the temperature of the responsive fluid which is filled in the bulb will also change so it will change its volume the liquid will change its volume so what will happen that expansion will go to the burden tube through the capillary tube and the burden tube will expand due to the volumetric changes or we can, or pressure changes and that expansion will be indicated in the pointer and through which we will be able to see the change in the temperature now based on the liquid that we are using the whole pressure thermometers are categorized in the four various categories very first are the liquid filled pressure thermometers second are the mercury filled pressure thermometers third one are the gas filled thermometers and fourth one are the vapor pressure thermometers so let us talk about them one by one very first are the liquid filled thermometers and this liquid filled thermometers work on the very simple principle that the thermal expansion of the liquid will caused due to the temperature change okay so this is the basic working principle the thermal expansion of the liquid now in this kind of the thermometer when the temperature will change the volume of the liquid will change as we discussed earlier and this change produce the force that is necessary to operate volume sensitive devices like burden tube this is one of the option we can also use bellows over here 
or we can also use the diaphragms over here this is all the alternative option of the burden tube now in this case the complete system that means the bulb the capillary and the burden tube completely filled with the inert hydrocarbon liquids like xylene toluene alcohols etc now why we are using the hydrocarbons why we are not using the mercury because they are having the six time higher thermal expansion coefficient than the mercury that is the reason why we will be using the hydrocarbons most okay so this is what you need to remember this is the theoretical figure let me just show you the practical version of the same so this is the practical version over here this is the bulb this one is the capillary and the end is the burden tube and last one is the indicator this is also one of the same thermometer which is a liquid filled thermometers okay so this is how it will look and whenever the pressure will rise over here or we can say whenever the temperature will rise the volume will be increased in the system and a whole system will be pressurized and due to that what will happen there will be the change in the indicator this is what happens in the liquid filled thermometers now the liquid that is getting selected has some basic criteria very first criteria is pressure inside the system must be greater than the vapor pressure of the liquid to prevent the vaporization and the second criteria is the liquid should not be allowed to solidify even in the cold storage because what will happen if it gets solidified in that case the calibration can get affected these are the basic criteria for the selection of the liquid now there are some advantages and the disadvantages very first advantage of this system is it has a wide temperature span secondly as we are using the liquid the bulb size will be smaller and it has a lower cost but against that we cannot use a larger capillary in this specific case okay and compensation of the errors that are occurring due to the various reasons is difficult in the liquid filled thermometers now against that we are having the mercury filled thermometers as we understood that the hydrocarbons that we are using are having the six time higher uh, higher thermal expansion coefficient but mercury also provides some of the basic advantages that is why many times the mercury filled thermometers are also used the operating principle is same as the liquid filled thermometers there is no change in the operating principle okay but it has some of the major advantages against the liquid filled thermometer like it has a rapid response system secondly it has the higher accuracy thirdly it has a large power for the operating arrangement it will provide as it is a mercury it will provide the heavy power La next inside pressure is kept high so the heat effect error will be reduced and the ambient temperature effect is less due to the incompressible nature of the mercury so, so these are the major advantages that, that's why many times the mercury filled thermometers are also used the next one are the gas filled thermometers now this gas filled thermometers are based on the very basic principle of pv is equal to rt okay as the temperature of the gas changes at the fixed volume the pressure of the system will change accordingly that means the p is directly proportional to the t at the v is equal to constant and the thermometer is almost same in this specific case bulb will be somewhat having the larger size this is the only change that we are having against the liquid filled thermometers generally in most of the cases the nitrogen hydrogen and helium are used in the gas filled thermometer the working principle is almost same there will be no change in this specific case the last one are the vapor filled thermometers now the basic work over here it basically works with the vapor pressure of the volatile liquid okay 
द वेपर प्रेशर ऑफ द वॉलेटाइल लिक्विड बेसिकली डिपेंड्स ऑन द टेम्परेचर एट द फ्री सरफेस ऑफ दैट पर्टिक्युलर लिक्विड ओके एज यू कैन ऑब्जर्व देर इज अ वॉलेटाइल लिक्विड अवेलेबल इन दिस एरिया दिस इज द फ्री सरफेस एंड द अदर एरिया इज फिल्ड विद द वेपर सो द होल लाइट ब्लू कलर्ड जोन इज फिल्ड विद द वेपर एंड दिस इज द वॉलेटाइल लिक्विड ओके नाउ इन दिस केस so whenever any kind of change in temperature will happen what will happen the volatile liquid will be measured in terms of the vapor pressure okay so this is what is going to happen and most commonly we are going to use fluids like organ methyl chloride sulfur dioxide ethyl alcohol toluene ethyl chloride butane methyl bromine and dial ethyl ether so these are one of some of the most commonly used fluid and you can observe that these all fluid are the volatile liquids okay so this is what happens in the vapor filled thermometers so in this case this is the practical figure of the system in this area we are having the liquid section against that we are having the vapor section and this is the indicating device and where this is the basic working of the whole system as you can observe whenever the temperature will raise this volatile liquid will be converted into the vapor due to the vapor conversion the pressure of this system will be going higher and due to that change in the pressure what will happen this burden tube will sh ch ch show the change in the indicator so this is how the whole filled thermometer system will work so this is the end of this specific lecture in the next lecture we will be talking about the thermocouples so till then keep learning have a good day